What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and welcome to the Road to Horsepower. The Road to Horsepower is a series we started a few weeks ago where we take a Harbor Freight Predator 212cc Hemi engine and we do performance mods step by step and we dyno it after every step. This will show you guys the real world performance that you can expect out of your engine. So far we've removed the governor, we've added a billet flywheel and some 26 pound valve springs and we did some carb testing. Now we want to definitely get longevity out of this engine because on the other side of that dyno it gets pretty hairy running the stock rod close to 7,000 RPMs because it was never meant to run that hard. So on today's video we're going to be installing a billet rod from Go Power Sports. This is going to significantly increase our longevity of our engine because it does have insert rod bearings. Remember if you guys are interested in any of the parts used or that will be used on this engine, make sure to check out the links in the video's description because they do help us continue this series. So since we will be having the head off to replace the rod, we're gonna have to replace our head gasket. Now this engine comes with a 45,000 thick firing head gasket and you can buy for less than $5 a 10,000 thick sheet metal head gasket that's gonna significantly bump up our compression ratio. This is basically like we took our head and milled it 35 thousandths of an inch, which is huge number gains. So we might as well do it while we have the head off. And we also have Go Power Sports Hot 265 cam. Now they do have a fire variant of this cam. The numbers are on screen of the difference between the two. We're gonna go with a little bit milder Hot 265 in this particular video. In a later video, we're gonna do a full cam showdown. We're gonna test every cam that we can get our hands on that's gonna work with what valve setup we have and carb setup. Now there are cams out there that you're gonna really want to have bigger valves and a bigger carb and stuff. So we're not gonna go as far as that, but we're gonna keep our same setup and test every cam that we can utilize the power with what we have installed in the engine. We're gonna also have to switch out our 18 pound valve springs for some new 26 pound springs that our cam requires. So we got to drain the oil out and we got to get into this engine, pull that rod and slap that cam in. So we're going to be using a lot of oil during this series. We've been changing the oil after every two to three videos on the dyno because we want to make sure this engine lasts. So we've been using Amsoil Dominator Racing Oil. We use 1030 weight. We did break it in with Amsoil Break-In Oil. And if you're interested in any of this Amsoil products, you can make sure to check out the links in the video's description for Clovis Lubricants. He is the sponsor of the oil for this dyno series, and he did provide us with the dyno to do this experience. So huge shout out to Clovis Lubricants. And if you become a preferred customer, you can save up to 25% off of your Amsoil purchase. So let's get this engine on the stand and start ripping into it and getting these parts installed. This is why it's important to run a magnetic dipstick. This is just after a few runs on the dyno. Remove the flywheel shroud, coil, and flywheel nut. I have a flywheel puller tool that I use on these billet flywheels. We can now remove the valve cover, rockers, push rods, and the head. Remove the side cover, cam, and lifter. We can now remove the rod cap and slide out the piston and the crank. I like to fill the crank journal to make sure there's no wear before installing the billet rod. Our crank needs to be 1.188 inches plus or minus 5 thousandths of an inch. 
We can check this with a set of calipers. Make sure to check several areas of the crank. Our crank is right in spec so we can now proceed. I like to remove the governor gear from the crank to have less rotating mass. Install the flywheel nut to protect the threads and knock it off with a hammer. With the crank checked, we can now remove our stock rod. Pop the clip out of one side of the piston and slide out the wrist pin. Make sure the arrow on the piston is on the same side as the long ear of the rod. Lube and install the wrist pin into the piston and billet rod and install the wrist pin clip. Install the rod bearing by lining up the notches and popping into place. Make sure to scrape all the head gasket off of the block and then lube the cylinder wall. Lube the piston ring compressor and slide in the piston making sure the rings are gapped. Place the piston into the block and make sure to seat the ring compressor against the block. Tap the piston into the block. Install the rod bearings into the rod cap and install onto the rod. Pull the rod bolts before installing. To torque the rod, we'll start at 50 inch pounds and work our way up to 150 inch pounds, 20 inch pounds at a time while alternating from bolt to bolt. Once 150 inch pounds is reached, back out the bolt and retorque to 150 inch pounds if using Molly lube on the bolts or 170 inch pounds if using motor oil. Rotate the engine around to make sure there's no snags. Lube and install the followers and the cam. We can make sure the cam is in time by lining up the dots on the crank and the cam. I use a cut up side cover to check for clearance issues with our high lift cam. As you can see, our exhaust lobe is making contact with our crank. We'll need to remove the crank and grind the problem areas for clearance. After clearancing, we no longer have any contact with the cam and we can install the side cover. Since I am running a thin head gasket, I like to coat the gasket with some sealant. An easy way to install the valve springs on a Hemi engine is to remove the spark plug and feed in a rope into the combustion chambers to hold the valve up. Push the retainer down into the side to remove. Make sure to install the lash cap once this is done.
Real quick editor's note, if you notice in the next scene, you'll see that the green striped 18 pound valve springs are installed when I do the rest of the valve train. That's because your boy forgot to put the uh, valve springs in the 26 pound, so I had to go back and install them. I knew someone would catch it and I just thought I would call myself out on it. Uh, sometimes it's hard to go back and re-edit this stuff or refilm it, so uh, just thought I'd put that note in there. Let's get back to the build. Replace the push rods and the rockers. We can adjust the valve lash to three thousandths of an inch. We can now install our flywheel and torque down to 75 foot pounds. Install and gap the coil to 40 thousandths of an inch. Install the fan shroud and pour in some of that good old Amsoil and now we're ready for the dyno. Okay, so here's the chart off of one of our runs. So basically, we're making max torque at about 5,000 RPMs, and then we're making our max horsepower at around 6,500 RPMs. So we made 13.42 horsepower on that run, and on torque, it looks like we made 11.79 foot-pounds of torque. And our air fuel ratios was right where I wanted them, around tw the high 12s, low 13 range. All through it, there is a few blips in the air fuel ratio, like there at 13.2. But uh, we're making considerable amount of torque down low, you know, around the 5,000. So if we look at around 4,200, we're making 11.21 foot pounds of torque. So we're still making a lot of torque down low. I mean, even at at 30, about 4,000 RPM, we're making 10.44 foot-pounds of torque so this is pretty cool to note this uh just something like a cam and the head gasket gave us some pretty considerable uh, differences in power So that was pretty crazy. We changed the oil after doing a full break-in cycle and then at the end of my break-in cycle, I do a couple pulls with the break-in oil. 
So we drained the oil and before we changed out the braking oil, we was making like 11.78 foot pounds of torque with the braking oil. We got over the 12 foot pound of torque mark just by changing our oil. Like basically putting the Dominator racing oil, which has better lubricants in it to, you know, it's not just designed to break in stuff. It's made for maximum horsepower and protection. So we gained like a half a foot pound of torque and a little bit more than that, which is pretty crazy. I never expected that. So that's pretty awesome that braking oil is meant for one thing and that's breaking in. Alrighty, so we got the numbers hot off the press and what we're gonna be doing is comparing the horsepower and torque versus uh, the Makuni 24 millimeter numbers because that was the highest horsepower we left off on in the last video. Um, so basically overall, we gained 7.19% in torque and 14.24% in horsepower from the last video with the 24 millimeter Makuni from adding these parts. Um, that's a pretty huge gain. We're at 0.89 uh, more foot-pounds of torque in this video and 1.98 horsepower. So we basically gained one foot-pound of torque and two horsepower from the head gasket and the cam. Now I will say these gains would have been way more significant if we would have poured it up the head and done some other complementary, you know, modifications to this engine that would allow it to flow even more. Um, but we're just doing it with one part at a time. So I do believe the next video we are going to pour it up the head some, uh, just do a mild port job, maybe open up the intake a little bit, cut those sharp corners down, let the head flow better. And I think it would do a lot better with these parts. I think that's going to be a huge jump. And then of course we'll get into ratio rockers and things of that nature. We'll also test to see if we're getting all the valve train movement we possibly can. Because sometimes you can measure your push rod length and putting a little bit longer push rod in it can achieve you with more lift uh, if you get your proper geometry out of your rockers. Um, what I did think was pretty crazy was we basically gained 4.68% torque and 3.45% horse horsepower from switching from break-in oil to the Dominator racing oil. Now, um, Mark at Clovis Lubricants uh, is our Amsoil dealer, and he told me this a while back that if I switch to, you know, basically change it as soon as I can, as soon as the engine's broke in, change it and do all my numbers with Dominator racing oil. So that's what we've been doing. So a while back we did test to see, is there a difference in horsepower between the break-in oil to the Dominator racing oil? And actually we basically gained half a horsepower when I tested it off camera, but I was like, okay, this could have been, you know, just a temper, temperature change or something, but we gained almost a half a horsepower by doing it in this video. So you, you can uh, successfully say you can get almost half a horsepower more by running Dominator racing oil over the break-in oil. So that's pretty impressive. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Let us know what you think about this video down below in this series. We're super pumped to be doing this. I've been wanting to do this for years and it's awesome that we're finally able to be able to achieve this uh, and do this video series. So let us know any side videos you want us to do with the dyno. We hear what you're saying. A lot of people's wanting big block stuff and that is coming. We're waiting on a clutch that was back ordered for six weeks to be able to run the one inch shaft engine. So that is coming. We're gonna do a road to horsepower on every engine all the way up to the 999cc Duromax V-Twin. So uh, we got a lot of content coming out. 2023 is basically gonna be, you know, 80% dyno, 20% builds because I'm really enjoying seeing the numbers that we're making. So if you have any ideas of videos, let us know down below. Make sure to check out the links in the video description for the parts we have put on and will put on in this series. And uh, yeah. Use those links, buy the parts, use Amsoil, and thank you guys so much for watching. We can't wait to see you on the next one. Good luck making some horsepower. We love you and God bless.